We're continuing on page 7 of the AP notes on chapter 5 on gases, and we just saw that hydrogen has an average speed of 1927 meters per second, whereas carbon dioxide has an average speed of 411 meters per second at 25 degrees. So if you want to take a ratio of these and find out how much faster hydrogen is than carbon dioxide, you could just simply take a ratio of those two numbers. So it would be 1927. 1927 over the 411, and that's going to give you a ratio of 4.69 to 1, which means that, oops, that hydrogen hydrogen gas is 4.69 times faster than CO2 gas. Now there's another way you can do this that's a little simpler. If you simply have to take a ratio, instead of having to find each of their respective speeds, which takes a little more effort, we can take a ratio and we're going to divide, I'm sorry, we're going to derive this equation, which is Graham's law of effusion diffusion, from the kinetic energy equation. So let's suppose that we know that the kinetic energy, of course, is equal to one half mv squared. Maybe you know this from physics. So the thing is, if they're at the same temperature, they have the same kinetic energy. Okay, if you're dealing with one mole. Let's go back to this equation. Kinetic energy is equal to three halves RT times N, which is the number of moles. If we assume one mole, then temperature is the only thing that changes the kinetic energy. So therefore, if they have the same temperature and the same moles, they have the same kinetic energy. So that means that the kinetic energy in situation number one will equal the kinetic energy in situation number two. Now, let's derive from this Graham's law. We can first get rid of the one-halves. Okay, now we can divide each side by v2 squared. So let's divide by v2 squared, divide by v2 squared. So that's going to eliminate that. And then let's divide each side again by m1. m1, m1. So that divides out. So when you write this nice and neat, you're going to find out that v1 squared over v2 squared equals m2 over m1. And then we're going to square root both sides. So now you have v1 over v2 equals square root of m2 over m1. And that is exactly what we have here for Graham's law. So the velocity, which is the rate of gas number 1 to gas number 2, is equal to the square root of the mass 2 over mass 1. Now remember last time we said that you have to put these in kilograms. Now it's not going to matter because they're both dividing, so they're the same unit. They match, then they're fine. So you don't have to go to kilograms here, but in the other one over here you did on page 6. So now let's use our new equation to do this quickly and more efficiently. So the rate of hydrogen, I know that one's faster, so I'm going to put that rate up top compared to the rate of carbon dioxide equals the square root of the ratio of their masses. Now carbon dioxide goes up here. I'm just going to use grams because it doesn't matter as long as you match. So we're going to take the square root of 44 over 2, which is like the square root of 22. So the square root of 22 equals 4.69, which makes sense because that's what we found up here. So this is the shortcut. All you have to do is know uh, that you put the ratio here and then you switch the masses on the right side, take the square root, match the units, and then that's going to give you a ratio. And that ratio came out to be exactly what we discovered before, doing it the long way of finding the velocity of each one separately and then dividing and taking a ratio. So this is this nice shortcut. Now the only thing you have to be careful of is if the question has time instead of rate. What I have in number one is going to answer any question whether it says rate of effusion, rate of diffusion, speed, velocity, distance, any of those things. Let's take a quick example. Let's suppose you and I are having a race. 
running race and you're a faster runner than I am, okay? Your speed is going to be more than mine. Your rate is going to be faster than mine. Your velocity is faster than mine. The distance you cover is longer than mine. Everything about you is going to have a higher number except when you and I run together, the time I take is going to be longer than the time you take. So my time is longer than your time. So therefore, when you have a time question, you need to not inverse the molar masses. They match. So time one is on top and molar mass one is on top as well. Okay, and you can fix these square root signs on your notes. So let's take this example here with carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So the general equation now is time one, okay, we'll call it um, hydrogen, over time two, which is carbon dioxide is going to be the square root of molar mass 1, which is 2, over molar mass 4, <laughs> molar mass 2, which is 44. And then you want to fill in the time that's given. So the time that's given is 20 minutes for the hydrogen. So this is for the hydrogen. So 20 minutes goes here, and this is going to be your x. So now you're just going to have to do the math for this. Um, I'll write it out for you x times the square root of 2 equals 20 times the square root of 44. So you just do the math for that. Just make this a little neater here. And you're going to take 20 times the square root of 44 divided by the square root of 2. And you're going to get 112, 112 minutes. Now let's see if that makes sense. The hydrogen is lighter and it takes 20 minutes versus the CO2 is heavier and it takes 112 minutes. That makes sense because it's going to take longer if it's a bigger molecule to effuse out of a balloon, let's say, or diffuse through a room. And interestingly, this should still come out to be the same ratio we saw before, the 4.69. So the 4.69 is now the minutes of the CO2 is longer. So let's just do a quick calculation. 20 times 4.69 indeed does give you uh, 112 is not the right answer. Hmm. Let me check my math again. X times the square root of 2. So 20 times the square root of 44 equals divided by square root of 2. Wow, <laughs> I apologize. It's 93.8, so that did work. 93.8. All right, I'm actually not going to change this video just to show that teachers are fallible with calculator as well, and the answer should be 93.8, which is 4.69 times as much as 20.